Hey, everybody, Monkey Puzzle here, and welcome to episode. <laughs> Did I stick my tongue out there? <laughs> I never saw that before. Is that new? <laughs> or maybe he's just opening his mouth. <laughs> Anyway, I stick my tongue at you. No, I don't. I thank you for joining episode number 30, Exploring Ragnarok. Today, we're going to finish that project of building that aquatic pen over on the West Coast. So, I literally have spent maybe the last five evenings after work just grinding materials of getting metal and crystal and cementing paste trip after trip and taking it all over there to the west coast to build this thing. I've come a long ways. I may or may not have enough materials to finish, but uh, I will get it done one way or another. Most of the trips I have done actually with a weight griffin. That's uh, a new kind of new concept to me. I've been leveling this guy's weight up. You have to level the stamina up to a certain amount too, but actually just using them to transport completed building parts over there in a way that's much faster than the slowpoke pace of Quetzals or Argies. Today, though, I'm actually going to take this Argie and this Quetzal because I'm trying to do a big haul now. I've still got some more prefabricated parts, but I've reached a point where I can't anticipate exactly what I'm going to need, and so I'm going to try to trans start transporting a bunch of... Not that. Ugh. Oh! <laughs> Take two. I'm going to try to start transporting... What the heck? A bunch of raw materials over there so I can craft what I need as I need it over there. And it's going to take more than that. I've got a lot more here I've really built up. But this is as much as these two can carry right now. So, this Argentavis without a name, that was tamed at level 150, and Giblets, who does have a name, we're going to head over to there, and then I'm going to show you what I've done, and talk about what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it. So, I will see you there. So I made it out here with that delivery, and time to catch you up with what I've done since the last episode, if you watched it. So in that one, what I did is I basically outlined this whole area with these structures plus fence supports. Those things are awesome, so you can't see them now, because I've gone ahead and hid them. You can go ahead and do like that, you can see that they're all in there. But then I can go, oop, go away, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, so I love that part of it. That's very cool. So I've got this area all filled in now with the glass walls. And then at intervals, we've got the uh, metal pillars just to give it a look of support. I don't really need those, but just trying to give it some structure. I'd like to put some kind of ornamentation up at the top of them, um, but I'm not sure what that is yet. So if you have an idea of something I could stick up there, that would be very cool. Let's go ahead and don the scuba gear and get the grappling hook out, and I'll show you down here as well. Oh, I actually take fall damage when I hit the bottom there. That's odd. Anyway, you can see how many glass walls I have in here. Most of these are four high glass walls which use just as many materials and weigh just as much, but they uh, are fewer building pieces, basically, for the whole thing. So, got those all in here, and then the gate, of course, the behemoth glass gate in the metal frame. So I think this should be a good amount of room for a lot of aquatic dinos. Hopefully it won't fill up too fast, because I'm not in a hurry to build another one. I use stackable foundations right there to build a little pier that's going to lead to where our little mini base is going to be. I'll talk about that in a second. Let's go ahead and take our frog feet back off. And just talk for a second about the design. So I decided to go with this model. I'm only keeping 
basically uh, the the borders, the uh, frame on one side of these guys, and then I've upped the transparency or the op opacity, actually the opposite of the glass, to 25%. Because when it's totally clear, it just looks like it's not there, and you feel like you should be able to walk through it. So just so you can see the glass, I did that, and I think that's the look I want. I don't really want the awkwardness of the bar across the top. And then I needed to uh, only have one bar, because otherwise in these areas where they stagger, they it get thinner right there and looks a little weird. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I wanted to show you before I changed it. So this is just like one side. Here it doesn't really matter because they're not staggered. Um, but yeah, we'll do that. Who's pushing me? Pushy Pteranodon, my goodness. So yeah, I just got to do this to the whole pen. And then come, that's the M gun, the model gun, and then with the T gun, the transparency gun, I just got to go ahead and set it at 0.25. And I'll update that. Done. Yeah, and so you see, you can actually see the glass there. Oop, got to right click. Yeah, so I'm just going to go through, do the whole thing like that. Trying to go for the kind of modern, modern aquarium look. And that's partly why I use the whole uh, glass and metal thing. You know, just trying to make it look like a fancy metropolitan aquarium. Uh, so that will all get cleaned up. And it also has the effect of making it very impervious to dino attack. Everybody but the titano that's over there some, uh, sometimes will not be able to get through here. So that's cool. So I labored for quite a bit trying to figure out where I was going to put the base, because I can park dinos in here, they'll probably be just fine. I think we're far enough away from Argentavises that uh, they won't get any real threats from the air, except maybe an occasional Ichthyornis can come in here and wreak havoc. So the land dinos could probably take care of them, but just to keep the flyers safe, I want to have an enclosed place, keep them. I thought about building a roof at the level of this gate, but that would just be kind of high and awkward and I don't know. I just didn't like the feeling of that. I thought about extending this out and building off the front and then having another gate, but I was checking out the levels and the elevation just rises too much on this side. So it would just get kind of awkward, especially trying to place another gate there. And you know me, I need symmetry. There's no way I could just place it on the side. <laughs> So then I decided, well, why not take it out over here? It will be closer to the water. And this is all about being able to come out and jump on your mount so they could come up and park on this little wharf-like thing right here, right next to it. And we can leap onto them and swim away. And then this will kind of go with that lighthouse kind of theme that the devs already took over in the highlands. And they did have at the swamp at some point. So I'm going to make a little tower with this diameter and just take that up and not making it too big because I, well, one, I don't want to use too many materials, but <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to get caught up forever in building a base that I'm not necessarily going to live at here. There it is. But I will definitely need some utility out of. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and use stone on the inside for a little warmer feeling but still going to maintain the perimeter of metal strength so that one, just being consistent with the look, but two, again, just because it's a sense of security and I don't, I know I don't really need it, but it's fun. And I don't build in metal and glass too often. Anyway, these are kind of interesting. They look like you can kind of fall in there and take a bath. I might have to raise the opacity of those as well. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and build this up and then uh, probably put a couple layers on it and have the aviary up above for locking flyers up in and small mounts can uh, hang out in here as well. And just a couple more things to show you over here. And then I'm going to cut and do the actual build over here in my original box. I first put down, you can see I've got a bunch of saddles depot that I got out of drops and the treasure chests when the treasure chest existed. These are all ones that are here for the aquatic stuff. So we got Baryonyx, 
and the uh, blueprints as well. Are you pushing me again? <laughs> Man, you're a pushy Pteranodon, for sure. So, yeah, and then what else we got? We got a Dunkleo, which actually can mine metal now, which would be really would have been really helpful beforehand here. And then we've got the Megalodon and the Pelagornis and a bunch of stuff that's appropriate. So, and last thing over here is that I came and apparently B-Fun had visited and he left a nice gift. And at first I wasn't sure what was up, but he left this nice little note. It says, as promised, before we get sidetracked with extra arc snafu, which also deleted all my narcs, but got tons again now, thought she might be more useful out here or as a backup bird. So that's very cool. I uh, B Fun came out and contributed narcs and this nice tapajara. So that is awesome. Thank you, B Fun. So once I build the little aviary over there, I'll bring it over there and um, get rid of this. So anyway, that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and do that build, and it's going to be probably a bunch of hours or a whole next day for me, but just a few seconds for you. So see you soon. All right, everybody, quick update before I go back for even more materials. This is as far as I got so far. So I got this first level, and then a second level above that. Almost finished. Just need to go one higher to match it up. It's got this little glass balcony outside just to give it a little texture on the outside but i need a lot more to finish what i want to do i see i made a list i don't know exactly how many went into this but it's going to be kind of equivalent to what i'm about to read now i need to go get or <laughs> make fabricate construct 149 metal walls 42 metal triangle ceilings 24 metal ceilings 24 glass ceilings 37 glass triangle ceilings, 36 or 54, depending on whether I make it two or three high, of glass walls, minus two to four glass door frames and doors, 12 slope metal triangle roofs, six slope metal roofs, and then uh, that hopefully will finish the structure. And then I need a smithy, a fabricator, a generator, a refrigerator, and uh, maybe just go with mortars and pestles for now rather than a chem bench. <laughs> but anyway. Just to give you some idea of what I'm doing. So sometimes I don't put out videos too often because I'm busy making them and I'm dedicated to making them in game. I could just have like a creative server where I spawn this stuff in and I could make a lot more buildings that way. But I think you no know, criticism to the people who do it because of course, if you need to get videos out, that's the way to do it. But I like to have my builds attached to the game itself. I feel like once I went into creative mode with my propensity to build things, my stuff would just get unrealistic and not attached to the actual work it takes to make them. And part of my whole motivation for having a channel is sharing my actual gameplay, which is what I like to do. So less videos, cooler stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to keep working on this. Somehow I think I'm going to get this done tonight. Uh, this is many nights later from one of the times I said it was night or the next day and blah, blah, blah. But we'll see. I'll get it done. But in the meantime, back to more harvesting and crafting. So it is yet another day later, but I am done. I have built the lighthouse base to go with the aquatic pen. I went a little crazy, <laughs> but... I like it. I'm pretty happy with what I did. Let's do a quick fly around and then I'll give you the inside tour. So yes, it's quite sturdy, all made out of metal here. And I think it passes as a lighthouse. So you got two main kind of squatter floors on the bottom. And then up here, you've got a skinnier thing that comes up to the actual lighthouse part, the light. And there are lights in there too. It's fully wired and powered and everything, which I'll show you in a second. Got a nice little cap on top. I was actually looking at pictures of lighthouses and I think I got pretty close, you know, within, uh, within the degree that you can with arc. So yeah, now I am done building. I mean, I'm sure I'll add this and that, but yeah, I got it all cleaned up and ready to go. And next episode, there's nothing to do but fill it full of aquatic tame. So, 
Yes, out of building phase and back into adventure exploration phase. So let's quickly take a look inside. So yeah, I got our little dock and I put a grill here. I had forgotten that before. But yeah, I got everything all inside here now. So yeah, we got fabricators and storage and smithies and I didn't make an industrial forge, but uh, I think that'll do for now. There's not really enough room and I shouldn't be to be doing too much mining here. I do have a chem bench, which is cool and refrigeration. And then we can go ahead and climb up through the thing and see what we got. So this is the main aviary here. These are kept on automatic. So you fly your mounts in here. We've got a bed. I do need to put it down a few more. But then throughout the tall tower part, we've got these little lips in here where you can put additional tames. It's a little tricky up there parking in Argentavis because of its um, turning radius. It's easier with the tapajaras, but it can be done because I've done it. So yeah, plenty of vertical storage for long-term storage for your um, flying mounts. So... Yeah, and then let's just take the last ladder up all the way to the top here. So, yeah, you can fly in or you can climb all the way up yourself. So, yeah, I've got four lights up here on full strength. Actually, I could turn them up stronger if I wanted to. Let's see. Change settings. Right now, they are on three. So, I guess I could turn them up. I actually haven't seen it at night yet to know how strong they are. So... That'll be the last thing is we'll wait till nighttime and see. So I've got doors in three places so that you can jump off if you need to and get out of here. And then, uh, let me see, where did I put it here? You can actually climb all the way up to the top, maybe there, and hang out on the very tippy top and uh, poke your feet. There's a little gap there, but who cares? So yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna use this, make good, very good use of it to explore this whole thing. The world boundary is still just on the other, this side of that island, but we're gonna go ahead and pass right through it and go check that out very soon in the next episode. And yeah, there's supposed to be a trench out here somewhere where we can actually harvest black pearls off the ground. I've never, har uh, I've never tamed a squid. I've never tamed a basilosaur. I've never tamed a lot of the aquatic tames, actually. And I usually get about this far in my series, and then something happens, I move on. But this time, I'm actually going to do it. There is a whole bunch of exploration to be done. So I'm going to wait till nighttime and see what this looks like then, and then we will check out. All right, and here we are in the middle of the night. It's all lit up. I put some more lights on the outside there. I think the way that arc light works is it actually needs something to reflect off of. So if I put like a ring of walls in the middle of it or something, it might be brighter. But anyway, that's what it is for now. So I think that's pretty cool indeed. Let's see, where can I jump off? Right here. Woohoo! <laughs> I do a lot of jumping off of it. And let's just get one more look at, at it in the night here. So that's pretty cool indeed. Let's turn that off. Yes, I like looking at it through the water actually with the stars above. That's pretty cool. So I'm pretty happy with it. This will definitely serve my needs. And now have an outpost on this further west coast southern shore. And we're going to put it to good use. So I will see you in the next one when we do that. And thank you very much for watching until the end of this one. Bye-bye. Yeah.